Can you learn how to code while doom scrolling your social medias? So let's find it out. You decided to learn how to code. You probably found some kind of a developer roadmap or crash course to follow. But doing it for a couple of hours a day is not enough. You have to create an environment. And it can be tricky if you are studying on your own and you do not have like-minded people around. Yes, it is hard, but not impossible. So here's my advice. Subscribe on tech, nerdy, coding content creators that talk about things that you're trying to learn. And I don't mean channels with tutorials. Of course, they are extremely useful and I guess it is obvious and you already kind of following some of them. I mean, uh, subscribe on TikTokers that explain programming memes or create funny stories about developers' life. Listen to podcasts where experienced people discuss hot problems of the industry and share their opinions. Read books. Books are really underestimated. They can become outdated if it is a book about certain framework or language, but general engineering knowledge does not expire. And for the latest updates, uh, follow people on Twitter and subreddits about coding where real people who are working in tech uh, talk about stuff, share the news, share their experiences. That can be extremely useful just to understand what you're gonna deal with. And of course, practice. There are many platforms that offer you coding problems and exercises for any level of seniority and any programming language. All you need to do is just to find some time and deep dive into solving these problems. And in this video, I am going to share with you my favorite channels, content creators, platforms, books and podcasts that helped me to become a better developer and pass many interviews. We will start with podcasts, because these are the easiest to consume. You can listen to them when you're commuting or working out or just going on your daily walk. My favorite podcast is Soft Skill Engineering. And as you can understand from the name, it is mostly about soft skills. Yes, it's not that technical, but uh, really they talk about wide range of problems that every developer faces in its professional life. And even if you're not working yet, it is really good to know what expects you. And really, I love this podcast because uh, hosts have great sense of humor and even when they talk about complex problems, it is fun to listen to. And also, I have this warm feeling that I'm just talking to my old friends or colleagues because the uh, topics they discuss, it is something that I do in my everyday life and uh, it is highly relatable to me. And when I first discovered this podcast, I just binge listened to it and uh, I couldn't stop for a few days and sometimes I was even laughing out loud because they were so funny. And the second podcast I want to talk about is more of a hard skills and technology oriented. It's called Software Engineering Radio and you probably won't listen to every episode of this podcast, but I'm pretty sure you will find something interesting there. They talk about wide range of technical topics such as backend, frontend, CI, CD, testing and all these kind of stuff. So probably if you're doing backend you won't be listening to frontend episodes, but everyone can find something interesting. For example, I recently listened to the episode about flaky tests and can you imagine they invited a guy who did PhD about flaky tests? Can you even imagine PhD about flaky tests? For me, it's just, I don't know, amazing. Uh, and it was really interesting to use because at my work we have this problem of flaky tests and I would really like to know how other people deal with that. And there are many other interesting episodes there, so just go and check it out. And the third podcast I want to recommend you is The Developer's Tea. And this one is more of a self-help for developers. It is done in form of a short monologues, like 10-15 minutes, that are designed to fit in your tea or coffee break. And the host uh, talks about different things uh, such as psychology, habits, productivity, uh, working environment, well-being, and all kind of stuff that is 
reminding us that developers are humans too. It's not technical and it's very easy to listen and personally I can tell that it calms me down. So if you kind of anxious and stressed about your work, it is probably a good idea to check it out in your coffee break. And there are so many great creators on YouTube too, including myself. Don't forget to subscribe on my channel if you didn't do it yet. Uh, so it's really hard to choose which ones to talk about, but I'll try to do my best. And the first uh, YouTube channel about coding in my personal rating is Fun Fun Function. Unfortunately, the creator of the channel decided to shut it down a few years ago, but still there are a bunch of videos on his channel explaining JavaScript methods and best practices, and they're both educational and entertaining. So especially if you are a beginner, I strongly recommend it to check this channel. Uh, you'll find many interesting and useful things there. The author of this channel has a real talent to explain things in a simple and clear manner. And for example, his video about JavaScript generators are just amazing. And the second channel I want to mention is probably one of the most popular on YouTube. It is Web Dev Simplified. And this channel has a bunch of tutorials about uh, HTML, CSS, uh, vanilla JavaScript, browser APIs, Node.js and many other things. And what I really like about this channel is that he explains uh, things from like basic stuff. He doesn't ignore so-called like boring things like CSS and vanilla JavaScript because uh, you know many people they just want to uh, use the hype around some new frameworks and stuff um, but he really has uh, like solid uh, tutorials for beginners and for advanced learners too so don't be lazy check it out and enjoy and not only individual creators use youtube to host their courses such giants as freecodecamp uh, host their tutorials uh, on youtube too and on their channel you can find many videos that cover all kind of stuff like starting from javascript aws and python uh, they even have uh, a tutorial uh, about how to be a good engineering manager so i'm pretty sure you can find something interesting there and of course freecodecamp offers not just youtube channel but the whole platform where you can uh, watch courses, build projects and solve uh, programming problems and even get certificates and this is completely free. Of course you still can donate something and you know that is good thing to do because people who are investing their time and knowledge to help other people to learn for free they should be appreciated. And if you had enough tutorials already check out Fireship channel. This channel covers tech news in a very speedy manner. So if you are lazy to read Facebook and Twitter, but you still want to be up to date with what happens in the uh, tech world, this channel is for you. And I really love the sense of humor and sarcasm of the guy who runs this channel. And his videos are always fun to watch. And I also like to watch a guy whose name is Theo. Uh, he is an ex-Twitch developer and he uh, runs a channel about all kind of random tech stuff as well. And uh, he uh, is a great YouTuber and great coder and he's a very productive creator. So if there is a, some new technology released, he is very quick to make video about it. And really, I am inspired by him uh, because he has so many things, uh, so many uh, projects to juggle with and I'm really you know jealous and i want to be like that as well and so what about tiktok gen z favorite social media can it be useful for us at all well i think it can of course you won't find here these thousand hours tutorials it is more of a meme territory and speaking about memes uh, i really like ben awad i hope i pronounce it right uh, and i started to follow him on youtube first but then he uh, moved to tiktok and he started to create this uh, explaining programming memes uh, series where he takes a meme that is not really uh, understandable for normal people and explains it explaining programming memes to non-programmers 
We got a meme here that says, Linux tips, always remove the French language pack, sudo rm-fr dot slash star. Now, this is funny because it's a programming pun where fr looks like the word French, but fr also stands for force and recursive, which will forcibly and recursively remove all files or folders in that directory. And another great TikTok creator is Jerry Chen or Miso Dope. He creates uh, funny videos about developers' lifestyle. And again, I appreciate his self-irony and sarcasm. Are you still working from home every day? Yeah, I am. I'm actually working right now. Don't you miss going to the office and interacting with people sometimes? Mm. Doesn't it get lonely? Yeah, I guess, but no. Or Jay Kim, who uh, films TikToks about hard life of a programmer, and it is again very relatable for many of us, but still funny. My five to nine after my nine to five as a software engineer. I log off at five after a long, hard days of work. At 5.03, I get a message from my boss about how my code broke everything and work until night to fix it while praying I don't get fired. There is not only funny channels on TikTok though, uh, some of them trying to teach us real stuff. For example, Creative Team, uh, he explains us in his TikToks how to fetch data in the browser or how to create an animated uh, navigation menu in CSS. Animated Navbar project in CSS. Ready? Prepare your screenshots. Go! Start coding now. And of course, it is uh, a bit strange to learn coding uh, using screenshots in TikTok. But well, that's a Gen Z way to learn things. And there are uh, also uh, TikTok channels uh, dedicated to certain programming languages or even tools, for example, uh, Python or uh, VS Code. And I really like a VS Code TikTok channel because they talk about some life hacks and features in the code editor that I use every day and I don't even know about them. So it is uh, really useful for me and I recommend you to subscribe on their channel too. Are you guilty of writing to do in your comments then promptly forgetting about it? Because same. Luckily, there's the to-do tree extension in VS Code that lets you quickly visualize all the to-dos across your project files. You can then quickly jump to them and, well, actually do what you said you need to do. It also works for tags like Fix Me, and you can even add custom tags, like if you want to track anywhere you've denoted legacy code, for example. Try it out. Gen Z learns coding on TikTok. And what about us old people who were born before the internet? We read books. And that's also a good way to learn stuff. Uh, do not underestimate them. Of course, they say that books can uh, quickly get outdated, but there are classics who never expire. For example, Clean Code by Robert Martin. Uh, it is like a Bible. It should always be on your bedside table. Or you can just check out a shortened version with examples in JavaScript in this GitHub repo uh, that I linked below the video. And another extremely useful book, at least it was for me, is a Cracking System Design Interview. If you don't know what system design is, this book is for you. It explains software architecture concepts uh, using the examples from real life. You probably already know some things about it, but this book is really good to help you to structurize and refresh your knowledge. So read it just a few days before your interview, memorize some smart words and surprise your interviewers. You will never regret about it. And of course, there are books not only about hard skills, but soft skills as well for us programmers. For example, Networking for Introverts or Herding Cats. Uh, these two books can be useful. You know, it is really uh, hard to socialize and do networking. Uh, when you are a programmer. We are not the most outgoing people and these books 
help you to overcome this problem. So, there is a lot of theoretical knowledge, but what about practice? There are a bunch of platforms such as Udemy, Coursera, Pluralsight that offer you a great amount of tutorials. But the problem with all these tutorials is that if you just watch it, it will not stay in your head, you will not learn this stuff, you need to practice. And uh, that's why I really like Code Academy. This website offers you a small amount of free lessons to try and then if you want to continue you have to subscribe. But it's worth it uh, because of how it is done. Uh, you have a short video lesson and after it you have an exercises and you cannot skip to the next lesson until you solved all your exercises and all your tests are green. And I really like this approach because, you know, watching tutorials without practice is a waste of time and uh, we all are guilty in it. And if you already have some skills and you don't want to watch any lessons, you just want to practice, uh, there are such great websites like Code Wars or Exorcism and they offer you just a bunch of various coding problems in any level and in any language. And what is especially useful about these problems that after you uh, submitted your solution, you can see solutions of other people and sometimes you can be just shocked how many different ways you have to solve one problem and also some of the solutions are so elegant uh, and uh, short that you couldn't even think about it. And it also uh, helps you to grow as a developer when you see so many different approaches and uh, sometimes you even have to Google certain stuff, certain language operators uh, that you didn't know before. Uh, so yeah, that's extremely useful and also uh, the community around these platforms are amazing. So that's it for today and I hope you will find something new and interesting in this long list of stuff that I shared today. So that's it for today and I hope you'll find something useful in this list of resources that I shared. And if you have something to add, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching and see you soon in the next video.